knec.com. Welcome. Check it out. We were doing an actual in-person interview. Can you believe it? All this time we've been in seclusion doing these video Zoom uh, interviews, uh, but we finally are back to in-person interviews and I'm stoked and I have the pleasure of talking to Sin. How you doing, brother? Good. How Cheers. are you, my friend? We are here. Uh, I'm great, thank you. Uh, we are here for a very special occasion uh, to talk about his new project called Siglos. And this is a pretty uh, deep project that you're involved in, right? This seems to be something that's really, uh, I guess, hits home. How would you describe Siglos? Yeah, it, um, I mean, it's, uh, you know, for a while, I was sort of losing my excitement for music, if that mm. makes any sense. And um, when I got into this project, or, or created this project, rather, um, I don't know, it kind of like lit that fire again. Okay. And um, so the way it happened is I was in the studio with my engineer producer, Alex Crescioni. And um, he had actually let me borrow a couple of like uh, extreme black metal, you know, with CDs and stuff like that, just yeah. to check out. And we had played with a, I had played with a bunch of these bands, you know, in Europe and, and yeah. throughout the years and stuff like that. But I never really gave it a chance, to be honest with you. And um, it wasn't until I really sort of sat and listened to these things that it intrigued me a little mm -hmm. more. And so I started writing um, some material. And I wrote this one song um, in particular, and I went to Alex and I said, you know what, I'm really, I'm hearing that style of vocal mm. to this music, and I had never done that before. Mm. And so um, he said, yeah, he goes, you know, I know a guy, this guy named Pedro Sanchez, he's in a band called uh, Transtorno, and um, he said, let's reach out to him, see if he'd be down to do it. And so we did, we, you know, hit him up, he came down to the studio, and he nailed it. He did exactly what I was hearing. And so I was so excited about it that I said, let's do another one. And um, and we did that and another and another. And so right. um, initially what I was gonna do is I was gonna release um, sort of a solo album mm. with different vocalists on each track. Oh, wow. That was the initial plan because I didn't know what to do with all this material that I, that I had. And so um, that kind of got put to the side because I was digging everything that Pedro was doing. And so I said, you know what, I, I think I want to actually make a project out of this. And so that's how Siglos came to be. And uh, right you, from the... Did you, like, uh, uh, when you heard what Pedro was doing, did the material that you already had, like, get applied to this? Or did yes. you, have, did you end up writing all of it together? Both. Oh, okay. Both. So, so what happened is the first one I wrote with that style of vocal in mind, right? The second one was one that I had sort of, you know, already there. I just tweaked a few things with it and I was like, okay, this can go with that vocal. Um, but another cool thing about the project for, for me and for us is that, you know, um, in that first meeting with, uh, with Pedro, he was like, hey, do you want to do this in English or Spanish? Yeah. And I said, Fuck, dude, let's do it in Spanish, yeah, man. Yeah, and awesome. uh, and so he's like, okay. And so, you know, every song, all the lyrics are in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to keep it, you know, that way. I just, to me, it's just another, I don't know, just another cool aspect of it. You know, Spanish was my first language, mm -hmm. um, as Pedro's as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I don't know, it just has a little bit more meaning to me. We're, we're very, um, you know, proud of our, our, you know, heritage, roots, yeah, yeah awesome. our roots awesome. and stuff, and so, you know, we, we just think it's another cool side to that, you yeah, know. Are um, both of you of Mexican descent? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, that's I was, cool. uh, I mean, I was born in L.A., okay. um, but my parents from Mexico, yeah. and, um, Same. you know, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't learn to speak English, so I went to kindergarten. I'm still learning. <laughs> and um, you know, uh, oh, well. and Pedro, you know, same thing. He's yeah. uh, I want I think he's actually he might have been born in Mexico. Oh really? Yeah. Um, so we're you know our roots are definitely you know Mexican mm -hmm. and um, yeah we're bringing that to the project as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's, it's cool to you you know you, like you said reach back into your roots and uh, yeah you can help find find some more influence. Or Absolutely. Some more, uh, Absolutely. Ideas, right? yeah. yeah, and you know what there, I mean? There's something about uh, you know the the Latin culture that brings a certain rhythm to things, 
you know, and uh, mm-hmm. and we definitely both have that. Yeah. You know? The soul, the soul yes, of the music. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. for, for fans uh, that should check out uh, Transtorno, uh, like a, I think they're also a local band. Yep. Um, like extreme black metal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, really cool guys. I've met Pedro before too. Um, and so the first single that you had put out was Por los Siglos. Mm-hmm. And he also actually had a video come out for this as well. What's the going along with the theme we're talking about? The lyrical content, like what's uh, kind of take us down that road, and what's about? So, um, all the lyrics, I write all the music for, for Siglos, Pedro does all of the vocals and lyrics, very spiritual, um, and we actually didn't have a, a name for the band mm. at the time, until I read the lyrics for Por los Siglos, mm. and, you know, I had heard that term all my life, you know, and um, there's something about the word Siglos that just kind of stuck out, and I, and I approached Pedro and I said, man, what do you think about calling the name, you know, the, the band Siglos, and he dug it, and so that's kind of how that started. But the lyrics are, um, they're all about, you know, sort of a uh, personal journey, um, your roots, where you come from, where you're going, um, and it's all very spiritual. This brother was a very spiritual individual, um, very much in touch with that side of him. Awesome. And, um, you know, we're not really doing, um, like, a political, thing or anything like that in the lyrics it's all pretty much like you know self-reflecting um you know uh, and very personal sure. whether it's something that you know i've gone through he's gone through um where we think we're going where we're headed um more along those lines um we're staying away from like the political stuff sure. uh, you know just because i don't know i just kind of I was in ministry for 15 years, so, you know, it was a very political band, and I just kind of like, okay, I think I'm done with all the politics right, and stuff, right. which I didn't have anything to do with the lyrics with, with ministry. Yeah, it, was it was the same fine, thing. It was, yeah. it was all all uh, the music that I wrote, you know, when, when I was in that band, mm-hmm. but uh, but that's sort of like uh, where Seagulls, you know, uh, lies as far as lyrics go. Right on, yeah. right on. And, uh, again, we're here with Sin. He mentioned ministry, two-time Grammy nominated. Um, he also been involved in uh, American Head Charge. Which uh, I think that's when uh, we first started talking. I think. Yeah. Um, and also Society One, which I remember seeing you guys a long time ago. Yeah, man. Back um, in the day. A quick short story. I think uh, I caught you guys at the Key Club in Hollywood. For some reason, I, I apparently I just got out of work because I was wearing my Toys R Us little polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the crowd. I go into this club, the Key Club, and I'm like, I don't even know what I was doing there, but I was like, seeing, saw you guys. I'm like. Was it the suspension show? The suspension show. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Key Club. So yeah, that was a big show, man. But uh, fast forward, and here we are, like, decades later, man, and uh, we're talking Siglos, um, Por los Siglos, the single that, and video that just came out. Uh, really deep, amazing imagery. Um, we touched earlier about the new single that you'll have, and you seem yeah. to still have some, uh, I would say, shocking imagery. Not like ne- not necessarily shock rock, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's it's like how you said it touches on the roots and uh, yeah. can you explain more of uh, what people can expect or what's the next single that's going to be out? Yeah, so we, we just shot uh, another video for a song called Morir Para Vivir and um, we shot the video out here in the valley actually and we actually brought in a shaman from Mexico and he did uh, an actual cleansing, if you will, there, you know, um, during the video shoot and it was like legit like real you know um it was it was i gotta say it was i had never witnessed that in person Mm -hmm. and um i mean you you felt it man like you could really feel it and um you know this guy we were we were very lucky and, and honored that this guy you know um was able to do this video with us so we're gonna we're gonna basically intertwine that with you know the scenes of the band and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. The, this uh, cleansing from the shaman, um, but the imagery, you know, for this band Siglos is um, we're keeping it a certain look, um, a certain vibe, and I'm trying to make sure that it comes across in the videos that mm-hmm. I put out. Yeah. Um, I want sort of I want there to be some sort of consistency with that, you know, um, yeah. as far as images, 
uh, of the band, um, you know, uh, and especially in the way the videos look and right. stuff like that. So we hope to have that uh, video hopefully debuting, hopefully in July or August okay. um, at some point. The singles, I mean, the song's done. We're literally just waiting on the video treatment and stuff right. like that. So yeah, I think when you point out the consistency, like it's kind of missing a lot. From yeah. what I can tell from a lot of bands, and it's good yeah. to have consistency. It's like you have a point. You're, this is the band. This is my art. Correct. And, and we're staying, you know, staying focused on what we're doing. Yeah, it's like, almost, oh, this, like it's just all scattered. Yeah, yeah, all over the place. It's almost yeah. like like a like your signature. Yeah. And um, you know, I want people to you know it, whether if they see us, like they'll know it's us. Mm -hmm. If they hear it, I want them to obviously know it's us. But it's like you know, I've been in other bands and other situations where. The, things are just all over but nothing wrong with that that's just whatever that is what it is but I just I, I wanted to be very focused with this project um, and I wanted to keep it that way like I don't want to stray from that obviously we have different sounding songs um, you know they're, they, they don't all sound the same they sound completely different but it, it's all cohesive mm -hmm. and, and it all makes sense and I want that to you know um, sound like that once we get to the album you know once we release an album stuff yeah. like that do you have a, an album ready to go? Like, so we're about you? halfway through an album oh, right okay. now. Um, the plan is for this year to finish all the songs yeah. and hopefully get a, uh, an album out, hopefully before the end of the year. Yeah. That's the plan. Right. And then versus, versus an EP? Versus an EP, because we have an EP's worth already. Yeah. Yeah. And um, But we want to do a full length. Yeah. So you want to just take your time with it. Yes, exactly. Right. exactly. Not just to rush it out. No, and because we were, you know, initially we were like, well, maybe we should put out an EP and then try and do some shows, mm -hmm. but we don't want to do that because we didn't want to rush anything, right. we're really taking our time with this, so yeah. we want to do a, an album you know, worth of material, and then next year we're going to touch on, you know, possibly doing some right. some live date. I'd really like to take this project to Europe, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd really like to hit all the festivals in Europe, and I just think that um, Europe will really eat this stuff up, Oh yeah, you know. Um, Europe, so that's the plan. Europe has a really great appreciation for metal. Very and much so. Music and Very uh, much so. I think America can learn a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I've said that for many years, man. And I, you know, looking back on my career, I wish that I or we would have focused more on Europe mm. early on. Right. Um, we kind of like, you know, we wanted to make it in the States. You know, you want to yeah, make it here right. and you want to do this and that here. And I mean, that's great and all, but looking back just seeing how Europe treats their bands and how loyal they stay yeah. with their bands yeah. um, I was like wow it's, it's eye-opening and so I definitely want to do that with this project I want to make sure that we you know are um, hitting Europe in that sense and also South America yeah, and Australia, all these other places. And all those yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally because I, I know especially now like as things are uh, opening up like people are hungry for that. Yeah, you know? I mean, you're, just, so. you're, you're hearing about all these big festivals like Hellfest and all yep. that are just happening. Yep. It's, yep, it's 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 festival season out there, and it's great. And and I, I'll tell you, I'm envious of them because they have some of the best, amazing festivals oh, out there. Here in America, we don't have that really. Not and at all. but we're but at the same time, we're like uh, uh, fortunate, for lack of a better word, because yes. yeah, like you know, we can just yep. go down the streets of a exactly. concert, whereas they in Europe, they take trains, they like take days to go to a festival. People you know? travel out yeah. there, man. They camp out and stuff like that and they do have I mean I am not uh, afraid to say Europe has the best festivals yeah I mean no doubt about it the states are we're we're way behind yeah. in that I mean I think it's getting better mm -hmm. but you know out there I mean you're talking bloodstock um, so fields, Hellfest, fields, fields, fields down the Lowe's festival yeah. uh, I mean all of those festivals are top-notch mm -hmm. and I mean you see the best bands ever uh, they treat you well mm -hmm. the fans just eat it up so yeah I mean definitely Europe wins I think in that in that respect for that yeah. Yeah. yeah so you mentioned earlier like you had almost lost touch or the the angst mm -hmm. the the kind of will to continue with music or at least you had like a little bit of a pause yeah uh, is this the first time that you ever felt like a hesitation or kind of just a roadblock that you kind of almost thought about putting the guitar down? yes yeah yeah and um, and this was so the last tour that I did was the 2019 uh, tour we did with Slayer. Slayer and I was like you know Slayer's last tour and we were out with them for a month um, just arenas yeah. and it was uh, it was Phil Anselmo the illegals 
uh, ministry, and Primus, Primus yeah. and Slayer. We were there. And um, I mean, it was like, it was one of the best tours I've ever done, right? right? And um, I got to do Madison Square Garden, sold out also on that run, and two sold out forum the shows. The forum shows. Which is like a huge dream come true for me. And awesome. it, what was funny is prior to that tour, a couple of months before that, I was doing an interview and someone asked me, what venues have you not played that you always wanted to play? And I were, immediately I was like, the Forum. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And um, and then a couple months later, we're, I'm at these venues nice. and they're sold out gigs. And the thing at the Forum that really hit me is that we played there November of 2019. Mm-hmm. 40 years earlier, November of 1979, I was there to see Kiss. Oh, wow. Uh, like, literally, almost to the day, yeah. dude. Um, I You're was a big Kiss fan, if I remember. Huge yeah, Kiss yeah. fan, yeah. That's like the band that got me into wanting to play. Oh, yeah. And um, it was, I was in the last row at the Forum. Literally, like, it was like this in the wall. <laughs> like, no joke, at the Forum in 79. And um, 40 years later, like, I'm playing the Forum. Awesome. And so those were the last two dates on that tour were, were the form in LA. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you know, the whole COVID thing happened yeah, and all that yeah. shutdown shit. And so we were still rehearsing because we were going to go to Australia in March mm-hmm. of 2020. Mm-hmm. And we literally were rehearsing up until like, okay, you guys can't go because like yeah. everything's shut, shut down. down. Yeah. yeah. And so... You know, I rehearsed with with them and stuff like that, and then it's like, okay, well, yeah. we're not going. And then we had a uh, like a summer tour. It was like June, July of 2020, that uh, like a U.S. tour. Mm-hmm. And so we thought back in March of 2020, oh, well, everything will be fine by yeah. then, and yeah. we'll, we're just going to do that U.S. run. And that came and went, and mm-hmm. obviously, it, you know, this whole thing just fucking sidelined everything. Yeah. And, and so Australia was, Australia was one of the worst. Oh, oh yeah, it yeah, it was nuts out there, man. So we would have been stuck if we would have like gone out there. And so, anyway, so during that year, year and a half off, I was just like, man, you know, like I don't know. I guess I got used to just not being on the road because mm-hmm. that was the first. That's the longest I had been home. Yeah. You know, in many many years. I mean, at least in the the, the fifteen years that I was with ministry, because we were always like it was like album tour, album mm-hmm. tour. Right. And so, um, I don't know, I was really, like, enjoying being home. Yeah. And um, I started to write a lot and mm-hmm. write different kinds of things. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, man, I don't know, I was starting to feel like I was in a hamster in a yeah. wheel with, with ministry. And not, you know, not anything against them. Mm-hmm. I was feeling that. Yeah. And I was feeling like the stuff I was writing just wasn't necessarily going the way I wanted it to go or ending up oh, okay. the way I wanted it to end up. Mm-hmm. You know, because like with, with that project, basically I would like come up with a, a song idea and then, you know, uh, hand it over and then basically, you know, Al decides what he wants, what he doesn't want, what he wants right. to change and stuff like that. And that's that's fine. But I, it, things just weren't necessarily ending up the way I was envisioning them. Right. And so... I was just starting to feel a little, I don't know, it, it was weird, man, kind of defeated, mm. you know, a little just like... Were you losing, like, your identity, you felt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like, I wasn't, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to hand it over, I'm going to do this. It was almost like it was becoming just like, like, I don't want to say work, but it was yeah. just like, uh, okay, this is just what, I'm, what I do, yeah. without really, you know, putting myself into it. Right. So... I was getting a little lost there. And so, you know, when I decided to leave last year, um, I was like, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it anymore. And um, so I split, you know, and then there was a while there where I wasn't doing anything. Mm. Like I literally, I wasn't even picking up my guitar. And and for me, that's, you know, that's weird because I I had been playing since I was 10. So... um, I think I just needed to kind of step away from things yeah. and sort of find myself again. Yeah. Put things in perspective. Yeah, and so. just kind of like, you know when you start playing music yeah. when you're a kid mm-hmm. and you do it just because you fucking love 
yeah. music and you love the same. Like the idol, you like idolizing all these like yeah, things, like you would kiss and you yeah, like and you just like you dig like oh, the sound that you're making with your friends, like you know it's just it was that love was gone. Oh man, and that had never happened to me before, and that was scary. Yeah, like Ooh. to feel, and so finally when it was, I started writing again, mm -hmm. and it was like that sort of excitement was starting to come back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, this feels really cool. Like, mm -hmm. And I feel like I don't have to be in this sort of box and I can write whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. and I can do whatever I want with it. Mm -hmm. And it was slowly starting to come back. Mm -hmm. And that's how it, I kind of started to do this again. And um, What was and it motivating I, you to like to write? And like, what was, was there something like influencing you on the way you were writing songs? Like, was it kind of going a different style because of what was affecting you? I, you know, I, I can't pinpoint a, a specific thing other than I guess I needed that time away. Mm. And I, I think I just needed to almost reset, if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. um, because I was just like, you know, like I, I mentioned that hamster in a wheel, like you're, you're just like this, mm -hmm. right? And when you get off, yeah. You're just like, oh shit! Like I didn't really realize I was doing that, yeah. or I was in that. You know, felt like I mean? you weren't going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. That's what it felt like for me. Yeah. And um, and so then when it slowly started to come back, it literally was just like, man, it was like when I was a kid and I just learned a new riff, or yeah. I just like it was that feeling. Yeah. And I, it, it's a, that feeling, as you know, is addicting, and yeah. you want more of that. And I just kept writing and writing and writing, and then, uh, you know, I booked time in the studio, and I was like just so happy with just what I was hearing, mm. even though I, like there was no band, there was no like it, it wasn't necessarily going to a specific project. Mm. I was just enjoying doing just it. Let the ideas flow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, you know what? I'll worry about where it goes later. Right mm. now, I'm just digging, mm. writing, and creating. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it. It this whole thing sort of happened and, and, and came to be was mm -hmm. for me just kind of needing to walk away really mm -hmm. and, and, and step away from it and um, you know I, it's, it's not until you get out of something that you kind of like look and go oh wow well, I, mean, I really wasn't happy with that or mm -hmm. I wasn't happy with this and, mm -hmm. and not to talk anything negative about what I've done I'm extremely proud extremely you know um, uh, appreciative Especially with ministry, like, you know, um, and I've said this to Al many times, he's like, I owe him everything um, for taking, you know, me in as a complete nobody, not that I'm anybody now, but like a complete nobody back then, you know, and giving me a shot, yeah. you know, because I got to do some incredible, amazing things right. that I never would have had it not been for him, mm -hmm. you know, giving me that, that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's just like, it just happens, man. Sometimes it's just time for a change. Yeah, and that's really all it you know all it boils down to. All right. Yeah. I, I think one important aspect, touching on what you're saying, um, we have fans that are just music fans, and then we also have I think I like to think that we have musicians that watch uh, these interviews, and I think it's important for them to like. I hope they just soak in what you just said. You know, a lot of what you said, I think musicians feel that way. You need to. Put yourself in perspective, put things in perspective, you kind of lose a little bit of hope sometimes. You gotta find those influences and yeah. and what what kind of other advice would you give somebody that, you know, is either just starting music, they have all these aspirations to like I mean, we all have the aspirations to be big bands, but you know, you once you take that giant step, I mean it's a big decision. It's you know, it takes a lot of dedication. Like what, what do you have to say to them? Uh, if it's something that you feel in your heart and you love, I always say do it and um, do it to the best of your ability. Another thing I tell people is, I mean, all I heard growing up was you're never going to make it, you're never mm -hmm. going to do this, like you're, you know, you're a horrible guitar player, you're <laughs> never going to like, you know, the fir at first it was like, you know, oh, you're hor you suck at the guitar, you shouldn't, you should just give up. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, you're never going to get a, get out of L.A. You're never going to get a record deal. You're never going to... Like, that's all you hear from, from people usually that didn't do it. Mm -hmm. True. That's usually who you hear that from. Um, you know, I... In what little success I've had, I mean, I got there. Yeah. And I did it. And it was extreme, extreme... Perseverance is just like 
through the roof mm -hmm. to do something like this. Um, you have to nervous? have thick skin. Right. Um, What'd you say? Nervousness? You have no, nervousness? you know what? No. That's the one thing. I, I've never been nervous. No. Oh, wow. uh, as far as like on stage, mm -hmm. as far as like being in front of a crowd or, or doing music and stuff like that, never. I'm way more comfortable doing that mm -hmm. than like going to some house party or someone and, and like, you know, or being around people or like, I'm more nervous there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, put me in front of half a million people. Mm -hmm. I'm right at home. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's like I could give everyone a hug and like I feel totally comfortable. Um, so that never affected me, but, um, you know, to, to, to guys that, that I talk to sometimes that are, that are young, that are starting out and stuff like that, it, it, you know, I tell them to do it, man. Um, I, I'll never say, oh, you should give up. You know, it's never going to happen for you because that's, that's bullshit. Um, but you've got to make sure that you're doing it for the love of music mm -hmm. and, and not for anything else, mm -hmm. not for, you know, I mean, it's nice to make money. It's nice sure. to, you know, get some fame, whatever that is, um, and all the other things that, that go along with it. But that those shouldn't be the the, the reasons why you're doing it, mm -hmm. because that you'll, man, you'll you'll get so discouraged, yeah. you know, especially in those early lean years when you're trying to make it. And um, you know, for me, it was just moving forward with blinders. Um, not listening to all my detractors, you know, saying that I wasn't going to make it um, because I surpassed all those people, and and um, and I don't say that in a in a egotistical way. It's just that I just no, kept moving honest. forward. Yeah, yeah. I just kept moving forward. Yeah. Um, but uh, learn the business as much as you can. Business is important. Uh, very important. Uh, always be careful of what you sign, and it sucks. You know, um, it happens to all of us it's happened to me um, sometimes you know you need to take that next step and sometimes to do that you need to kind of like sign some things that aren't necessarily in your best interest sure. but they put you here yeah. and it's just another learning thing really right. I mean it's happened to everyone man you know right. um, but yeah I always tell people to try to be as smart as they can um, obviously be on top of your game as far as your whatever your instrument is yeah. um, and just fucking you know do it move forward and, and um, you know don't don't uh, don't listen to all the negativity because right. that's always going to be there yeah. here's, here's the thing like that I don't think uh, institutes uh, teach kids that are learning music um, they teach them too much of the business but there's a business side to it is the street savvy? Oh, there's definitely. There's the things that you only learn if you're like hands on. Absolutely. And uh, and I would think that you were that, right? You would just like, yeah, hands man. on, getting your hands dirty, very much so. Everything. Very much yeah. so. Like, uh, what? At what point in your life did you see that like, about yourself? Like, oh man, this more to it than I thought. Um, man, you know, probably the first tour that we did, and that's with Society One. There were five or six of us in a Ford Explorer the country and this is while we were signed while we were on headbangers ball on bh1 on all that stuff and yet here we were you know um loading our gear in some alley and some mm -hmm. dump somewhere in the middle of nowhere um you know uh, no dressing room no food you know hardly any money um and look you know it, i mean and it was like that for years man and this is while you know back in the day when we would pull up into a town They'd be playing us on the local rock station, and um, any magazine you would pick up, whether it was Metal Edge, Rip, yeah, oh, you man. know, you remember all those, you <laughs> know, or the circus, um, yeah, circus. Yeah. I mean, we'd be in those things, yeah. right? So it's like kids would show up to the shows thinking that we were like rich rock stars, mm. and here we were making like a hundred bucks a night yeah. um, to oh. divide between five guys or so. Yeah. To get to the next the town, next town yeah. you know. So it's like, I mean, if you aren't in it for the love of music, mm -hmm. when you're in, in situations like that, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And there were guys that we lost along the way yeah. because of that. Yeah. Because they thought they wanted it right. until they saw the reality of that. Yeah. Oh, and then, I mean, you know, luckily it, it, luckily and hopefully it doesn't stay like that, and you keep building and building and, and mm -hmm. taking steps up, but. There are a lot of years where you know you you've got to go through those things, yeah. and I wouldn't change that. Right. You know, I'm glad I went through those things. Mm 
um, for me, it just made me appreciate everything yeah. that much more. It wasn't like, you know, we were, you know, on American Idol and all of a sudden we got a deal and, and all of a sudden we have millions of fans. And I mean, it's a different era now. It's for completely sure. different. This is, you know, back before the internet. And yeah. this is like when you were out there flyering and fucking literally handing flyers Actually to people you know, and getting into people's man. faces. And like, yeah. it was a lot of legwork back yeah. then and really hands on and getting, getting your hands dirty. So. Part of the fun, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's, that's like totally gone now. It's gone now. It's, it's easier, but it's also way harder now. Yeah. Because people just they, they don't they don't know what that's like to go into shows flying people you're not networking when you're not even realizing you're networking you're just yep. there you know and sharing these interests and stuff yep. like that and and, uh, yeah. and you know you mentioned society when um, you mentioned people that we lost I want to send a special shout out uh, to Dirt uh, miss yep. you we lost him uh, not too long ago Mr. Um, he was uh, he was such an amazing guy mm -hmm. uh, amazing bassist but yeah. uh, uh, an amazing friend. Yeah. And, Rest in peace. Yeah. Dinner, we we all love him and, and miss him dearly. Yeah, very very well said. Yeah, a beastly looking guy, but he was yeah. like a, he was like one of those teddy bears, man. He was really definitely. Cool yeah. 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 Um, I actually uh, first time I met him, a quick dirt story. Um, was just randomly I lived out in Hollywood and I was itching for a tattoo. Um, and I went to this tattoo shop, and he was a uh, because he used, <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. used to do tattoos. Yeah, yeah. So I got this tattoo from him. Oh, he did that yeah, one. Oh, that's right, killer, man. Right off of uh, Hollywood. Hollywood uh, Boulevard. Uh, yeah. And Cahuenga, I think. Yeah, is where yeah, the Tattoo yeah. shop is. So uh, that was the first time I met him. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't yeah. know that. So um, yeah, that's pretty, killer. You know, Mr. Right yeah. But uh, we're here with Sin, two-time Grammy nominated, talking about his new project Siglos, with uh, Pedro Sanchez of Transtorno. Uh, they just released a single. Por los siglos. Por los siglos. Uh, translated as for the ages, and uh, this is a Latin Hispanic uh, Mexican metal. Uh, I don't know if you want to label it as such, but uh, extreme yeah. metal. It sounds really heavy so far from what we, from yeah. what we heard. Yeah. Um, you said you have a new single coming out soon and a new video. Yep. Um, when uh, can the people expect to see this? Hopefully, um, hopefully we'll debut this uh, sometime in July or August. Um, we're just waiting. The song's done. Everything's ready to go. We're just waiting on the uh, video. Okay. Um, so as soon as we get the video back and everything's approved, um, we'll try and get a uh, release date for it and uh, you know some debut premiere. So, right, right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And then and you, so you mentioned something about like the imagery uh, and the lyrical content. How much has that opened your eyes more towards like your heart, your heritage and your roots? A lot, man. I'm learning more and more from Pedro. To be honest with you, because he's so involved in that, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, uh, all of his lyrics all touch on that. And um, I mean, another side thing is we, um, uh, the video is on YouTube, and I've, we've listed the lyrics on there as well for people that want to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, see that and read along and stuff like that. And um, and also on our Bandcamp, I want to just to me, it's very important to have the lyrics on there because I really want people to to experience um, what Pedro was saying. Um, but yeah, man, it's like, uh, you know, just having the shaman there, um, the stuff that Pedro talks about, I mean, it, it's pretty heavy, intense stuff, and, uh, and I'm glad, and it's like opening my eyes to new and different things, mm -hmm. you know, that even though I'm, I'm Mexican and, and that's my heritage, something that maybe I had never really, you know, gone into, mm -hmm. um, he's now sort of showing me and stuff like that, so it's that's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. So this is also lighting up a new fire in you. Absolutely. Music. Yeah, really good, really good. definitely. Man. So. Por los siglos, uh, do you have a, is, would Por los siglos be the tentative album title or is, that has not been? Yeah, we haven't even decided yet. Okay. Yeah, um, I have no idea what we're going to uh, call the album, but um, hopefully the album will be done, I'm pretty sure, before the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. We're halfway there. Yeah. In blistering summer here in Los Angeles. I want to thank Sin for taking time to talk with KNAC. Uh, make sure you keep an eye out for siglos. I'll provide all the links to all the music. Uh, at the bottom here and uh, what else any final uh, words that you want to let the fans know longtime fans new fans that are hearing Siglos um, you know what, what do you want to tell them uh, I mean just I, I really want to thank everyone that's um, you know stuck around and followed my career and what I've been doing um, it means a lot to me I see everyone out there and I get all the messages that people send me and stuff like that and for me uh, the whole KNC thing is a big thing because KNC was you know, fucking huge, yeah. man. And it was like it, a huge thing growing up, as you remember, right. from all you know the old KNC days. And I remember going to 
candy sea nights and some of the red onions back mm -hmm. in the day oh, and stuff yeah. like that you know so um thank you very much for for this um you know i, I really appreciate it and thanks to everyone that again has, has uh, continued to follow me and follow us and uh hopefully people will dig this new seagulls material um and uh hopefully we'll be back here again once uh, the album the album comes out very good, very good. yeah so again sin siglos keep an eye out keep an ear out for that i'm sure they'll be hitting your town soon we'll provide all the information again at the bottom over here and uh thank you for your time brother thank you very it's much always man. a pleasure, a pleasure. To see you around thank we you. always run into each other a lot absolutely. of times absolutely we've uh, been friends as a side note we've known each other for many years mm -hmm. an amazing uh musician drummer right here as well thank so you, thank you. yeah very much and uh, i'm francisco with knc.com thanks to diego thanks to raquel and uh Keep in touch and keep on following us on the socials. Again, we'll provide that information. Stay heavy and support metal.